Well, good morning, everyone. It's so good to see you all again. Welcome back to the Positive Living Center via Zoom Productions. Um, without Zoom, I don't know where would we be. We have this opportunity to be with each other each and every Sunday. And we've got people getting together on Zoom all the time for visiting. I think it's a wonderful, wonderful tool. Here it is. Uh, if you don't know this by now, it's May. May is here. Uh, I don't know what's going on with these months. They fly by me and uh, I can't seem to slow it down, but we are in May and we are still in manifestation this year. Um, we have themes, new themes this month. Healing is knowing the truth. Spiritual man and woman is already healed and releasing the negative. These are great, great themes. Uh, looking forward to hearing all our speakers talk about these things maybe and more. Um, I think it's time for us to settle in and get comfy. Let's go into a, a nice meditation. I'll ask Jim to play a little something for us in the background. And let's go within. Jim, you're muted. Sorry about that. Silver shining brightly amid the russet and the green. Lovely in the last light till the night brings an ending to the scene. And the simple way I felt it all in the twilight's fading gleam. When the secret words were spoken, they only spoke to you. We know right now that the truth sets us free. That spirit, God, is with us all. All is healed. All is well. And as we know, releasing the negative brings in the positive. And so it is. Mm. Welcome back. It is time for our spiritual thought. And that gives me the opportunity to introduce Reverend Judy DeRosa for that spiritual thought this morning. Good morning, Judy. Good morning, Joe. Thank you. Mm. Healing is knowing the truth. And each of us has a truth that we call our own. We know this to our very core until we don't. Sometimes old beliefs are so strong. It doesn't matter if they're based on facts or fiction. We own them. Then something comes along to challenge this 
so-called concrete belief. During a life-threatening illness, a person often starts negotiations with God. I'll do this and I'll stop doing that. Recognizing how precious this life is as this critical challenge flares up in our life, we start to search for help. This truth can be flexible or static or rigid. When one insists only on one way to do anything, then the opportunity to learn often fades or we have an awakening. Trusting that a higher power is within us and we evolve as we learn more. Here in New Thought, we can be filled with awareness. We can know that within the human body, we are capable of healing ourselves and others. This starts with the intention to become whole again, inviting the energy of the universe to assist you into this powerful circle of healing already started by asking creator to help. I hear story after story about terminal diagnosis by esteemed doctors who are certain you're about to die, yet many people choose to change their own mind and disregard this terminal diagnosis and find that higher power within their self. A spontaneous healing can occur. Stepping into the idea of wholeness can realign oneself with this new feeling of truth. What truth is that? That we are amazing beings in the process of learning we are more than we've been led to believe. If we skin a knee, or step on something sharp, the body automatically goes into healing mode. This biological spacesuit responds. We take action. A child runs to mom to take care of this, tragic to the child's view. She cleans the area of the skin, knee, and puts medicine on it, and then kisses it to make it better. This parent reinforces healing with words of, you'll be fine, everything's okay, I love you. The vibration of healing has already begun. When we realize that the physical body was designed to wear out, then it is our responsibility to care for this amazing vehicle. And so we can have experiences and so we can have this adventure for as long as possible. I'm not telling you that you will never die. I'm telling you, we can have a deep and rewarding spiritual, physical and emotional life while here on their, our journey. The Dalai Lama said, everything is designed to wear out. Nothing is permanent. I suggest that we use this knowing wisely. From the Native American point of view, the earth recycles herself. The ocean waves wear down the stones, the glass and plastic along her shores. A river wears away mountains. 
and the mono winds move giant trees. It is a cycle of living and death, a constant transformation of energy we are part of. To quote Albert Einstein, the world is a dangerous place to live, not because of the people who are evil, but because of the people who don't do anything about it. Put prayer into action. Say your prayers, then move your feet, as Angelo Pizzello often says. Your thoughts are powerful. As Einstein points out, put positive action into your thoughts. The healing, abundance, and love can follow and will follow. I must be willing to give up what I am in order to become what I will be. Is Einstein's thoughts only for the future? Or are we building a better tomorrow with our positive intentions and actions in the moment? My body heals with loving thoughts. I am whole and I am complete. And all parts of me are welcome here on this journey. I choose to make a positive difference on every level of my life experience. Is this inward exploration a step towards knowing your own truth? Everyone's point of view is different. We see the world from every possible vantage point and we respond to that input. If we choose to have a closed mind, then we have lost an opportunity to expand our awareness. As we change our mind, we change our life. We always have options. Wherever people gather together, Creator is right here in the midst of us. I see the vastness of spirit looking back at me in each and every face I see. I hear her in your voice. I feel him in the clasp of your hand. We are co-creators with source while we are here on Mother Earth. In this place and in this time, we know our connection to the vastness of great spirit is ours. The higher power is love and only love. Love yourself, and that is the first step to your physical, spiritual, and emotional healing. We do not know what tomorrow holds, but we do know who holds today. New thought is our tool. Just like any tool, we must learn to put it into action. Because here on this life journey on Mother Earth, we are learning to love, we're sharing kindness, we're exploring tolerance and opening to the beauty of this great mystery. Healing is knowing these truths. Aho, oh, and so it is. Namaste. Thank you, Reverend Judy. Beautifully. Well, well put. Uh, reminders to us all. We are the ones who, who 
make or break our day, as they want to say. We decide our good. We decide what it is that we're going to do. It's beautiful to have that, to remind us that we have that power. It's beautiful. It's time for some music with Jim Savarino. Good morning, Jim. I'll unmute this time. Okay. Yes, we'd like to hear you. <laughs> Judy, that was that was beautiful. Uh, every, you speak, and uh, uh, it always reaches me. Thank you, Jim. Your music does the same for me. Thank you. Well, something uh, about healing. Well, I went to see a healer in her house upon a hill, but the healer wasn't healing, it was she became so ill. As I held her in the darkness, soothed her fevered brow, she said, take these robes of healing, you're the healer now. Take these robes of healing, you're the healer now. As I walk the foggy highland, there's nothing on my mind. Just half-formed shreds of memory from some forgotten time. My family and my loved ones they don't know who I am Just a ghost they cannot see A shadow on the land Just a ghost they cannot see A shadow on the land Love may come and love may go Life may ebb and life may flow Remember me when I am gone Sing my memory in a song I know that I'll be with you Whatever road you take I'll be in the air you breathe And every song you make And life may bring the curtain To mark the final hour Nothing will replace the time Of love's bright burning flower Nothing will replace at the time of love's bright burning flower. Love may come and love may go. Life may ebb and life may flow. Remember me when I am gone. Sing my memory in a song. Love may come and love may go Life may ebb and life may flow Remember me when I am gone Sing my memory in a song That was beautiful. Thank you so much, Jim. Thank you. What a gorgeous song. Gorgeous, perfect song for this morning and the flow of where we are today. It's it's wonderful. Well, you have such a wonderful voice to listen to. Thank you for your time. It's time for our main speaker this morning, and it is with great pleasure that I get to introduce Reverend Sandy West. Good morning, Sandy. Good morning. Thank you. I tell you, this morning is just rolling along so beautifully. I feel like I could just sit here and drift 
Yes. With his family. It just, the music, the words, all of it are speaking to my heart. Yes. As you know, I don't, I don't read very often, but uh, <clears throat> for this month, I went back to the text and I spent a lot of times with Holmes' words and realizing that as I've evolved, so has my understanding of what he writes and the understanding of the truth that is in this text and in our teaching. If you don't mind closing your eyes, I'm going to read something that he wrote. Please allow these words to go into your body, to caress your body, to find where you need healing and allow it to just be yours today. Accept this gift of Ernest Holmes, please. There is one infinite mind from which all things come. This mind is through, in, and around us. It is the only mind there is. And every time man, woman thinks he uses it. There is one infinite spirit. And every time man says, I am, he proclaims it. There is one infinite substance, and every time man moves, he moves in it. There is one infinite law, and every time man thinks, he sets this law in motion. There is one infinite God, and every time man speaks to this God, he receives a direct answer. One one, one, I am God and there is none else. There is one limitless life, which returns to the thinker exactly what he thinks into it. One, 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 in all, over all and through all, talk, live, act, Believe and know that you are a center in this one. All the power there is, all the presence there is, all the love there is, all the peace there is, all the good there is, and the only God there is, is omnipresent. Consequently, the infinite is in and through man and is in and through everything. Act as though I am and I will be. That was so powerful to me when I read it. And it is the truth that science of mind and new thought teaches. We live in this world of illusion we see all these things that we call wounds or diseases, pain, hate, war. We see all of this. But the truth is that we've come into a world of illusion, like going to the magic show, to learn the truth of how the trick is done. And that is what this teaching teaches, the truth behind the illusion. Yes, I was ill, but that was an illusion. Yes, I lost part of my body, but that was an illusion. It's like changing my dress, putting on another hairstyle or another hat, illusion. The truth that got me through it, the truth that set me free the truth that sets all of us free is that we are God. There is only God. There is only this perfection. It is up to each and every one of us if we are willing to accept this or not. It appears that most of us need to fight it, that we can't accept that this isn't real. I remember how hard it was for me to understand that there's movement in everything, that nothing is solid, 
that there's movement in a table or a chair or a floor or concrete. It just moves slower than the other parts that are in my world. And when I could finally get a grasp on the science of that, I started to get a grasp that reality is constantly in motion. So if I consider this my reality, it's moving, all of it's moving. That means none of it is permanent. That means I am empowered to make changes. I am empowered to do it differently, to see it differently, to change my perception. I am empowered to be free. We're here for freedom, to learn about freedom, to learn the truth of what that means. Freedom doesn't mean that this is a better country than some other country in the world. Freedom doesn't mean that I can do what I want and go out and hurt. True freedom is knowing the truth that I am God. God is me. That is all there is. And no one can take that knowing away from me unless I allow it. And I now, as Sandy in this life, refuse to allow it anymore. I refuse to give up my freedom. My freedom in my mind is what empowers me. The freedom that goes through my heart and my stomach and my solar plexus. The freedom to put fear aside. The freedom to put other people's opinions aside, their thoughts aside, their judgments aside. To not accept them anymore, to not internalize them anymore. To change my perception of what my perfection is. I only have one breast now, but I am still perfect, whole, and complete in the truth. That breast was an illusion of this human condition. It didn't have anything to do with my heart. It didn't have anything to do with who Sandy was. It didn't have anything to do with my sharing and caring and the things that I am able to help with are great in this world. It was a thing, a thing that was no longer needed. So it changed. That is truth. When we no longer need it to learn our truth, it goes away. When we no longer need a lesson to guide us and to show a way on our pathway to our truth, that lesson goes away. To see the beauty in what we call chaos or what we call disease, to see the perfection of it as it guides us along our path. COVID helped me. It helped me be more comfortable being Sandy, being with Sandy, spending time with Sandy, not having to rush out and find something to do. It was okay to sit and look at a tree and to feel the tree and to take whatever time was needed in that now moment to know the truth. Whatever condition that tree in is perfect. We were talking earlier about the beauty of the forest and how after the fires, we judged that beauty is gone that we saw ugliness, when we saw no green, when we saw black misshapen trees, when we walked through black on the ground and felt like life wasn't there. But we've learned over the years that there's beauty in that, the beauty of creation of going back to basics. I can remember going up to Cherry Gap dad took us to see after the fire up there years and years and years ago. And it was like a road going down from above Shaver and coming down. And first time he took us, it was all black after the fire. 
The next time we went years later, the green was starting again. Trees were coming back up, the grasses were there, the animals had come back, the sky was shining, the birds were flying. It was all perfect in its rhythm, if its creation in its evolvement. The greatest gift we can gift ourselves with is this freedom. This freedom to be who and what we really are as we know us in this human world. The freedom to not be afraid. The freedom that all is well. The freedom that death isn't an ending, it's a beginning, it's an evolution, it's a change. The freedom to not be afraid of change, to accept it and to welcome it. I'm no longer the spring chicken I was once. I'm no longer the angry alcoholic that I was once. Those are part of my history. They help to guide me on my path and bring me to a point in time where I could live a life in love. I'm not saying I don't have bad days, but I don't wallow in them. I don't stay in them long. I maybe talk to a friend or to my sister. I share, I pray, I meditate, I talk to God. And before you know it, I'm back in alignment with source again. I'm back there living my truth, being my truth, manifesting my truth, knowing that this is the most important class I have ever taken in all of my soul's existence, is this world. To learn about these emotions, to learn how easy it is to give up the light, to learn how easy it is to make decision after decision, day after day, that takes me away from the light and down a different path. I am grateful for this lesson. And if I were giving myself a grade, I'd probably give me an A plus, especially for endurance, for patience, for the willingness to walk the path it took me to bring me home. Home to God, home to my heart. God's heart beating is one, for we all are one. My heart beats with every one of you. My heart beats with every tree and flower, every weed, every everything. It's all one. And when I relax into that, there is no greater gift. This is what has made my wildlife worthwhile. I don't need an obituary. I don't need a tomb. I don't need a plaque anywhere. I have God and myself, that connection, that partnership, that knowing. And that means that I have each and every one of you and each and every one of you has me. We walk this path together. We love together. We create together. We are all one. And as you go forth this week, take the messages that you've heard today in our spiritual thought, our treatments, in our music. This truth is your path to freedom. Embrace it, walk it, and live this life to the fullest. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Sandy. What a wonderful path you took us on this morning. A reminder of all of us that we all have this good in us. We all have this wondrous connection, spiritual connection with, with God and, and the path you have taken. I, I've been there with you, you know that, as we go through. My prayers have been with you as so many other people prayed for you. And between that and everything else, you come out healed once again, just like Reverend Misty asked for prayers last week and she got the positive results that she was seeking. We know the power of God. We know the power of using these teachings daily. Just beautiful. 
beautiful, thank you. Ah, it's time for our offertory. Would you please say our offertory uh, saying with me, please? Divine love flowing through me blesses and increases all that I give and all that I receive. Thank you. Um, I think everyone here knows how to donate uh, for tithings for, for our center. If I think through the information is in the chat box. In the chat box. Thank you, Missy. It's there for you. We are still receiving from you each and every month. It helps pay the bills. The Positive Living Center is awaiting us to return and we will someday. I have no doubt about that, but it pays the bills and keeps the grounds neat and clean and thank that and thank everyone who is in service to the PLC. Thank you so much. And Joe, can I say something? As we talk about the PLC, even though we're not meeting over there, those grounds are open to each and every one of you. Yes. If you wanna go walk them, sit on a bench and meditate, Yes. Engage with the animals or the trees. It's a very peaceful sanctuary. Yes. Please feel free to go any day or night and heal yourself and pray. Yes. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. We have announcements this morning. I have an announcement. Yes, Missy. Um, in the chat box, I just put a, a website URL. And that's where we're now posting the Sunday services on YouTube. It's the PLC Oakhurst YouTube channel. So we have up there now all of March and all of April. And hopefully, uh, God willing, yes, I know, all of us willing, uh, I will be posting the Sunday service after uh, uh, later on uh, today after uh, the service is complete. Yes. And, and you'll find them on Facebook, too, on the PLC uh, Yes, LJ. Um, and I just want to remind you that that link is also part of the iFocus on a weekly basis. It's right below the second Donate Now button. Mm -hmm. cool. You do a good job, LJ. Thank you. Thank you, LJ. Just reminding everybody, it's we got that too. <laughs> Anybody else announcements? No? Everybody else is, yes, Judy, unmute yourself. Yes, um, I received feedback from John Nelson who did all the work around the PLC because it you can now walk around the area. And he was absolutely uh, surprised with your wonderful note to him and his, um, um, gift certificate for the wood choppers for, mm. for his work. So he wanted to make sure that I said, thank you, thank you, thank you. Mm. That's so, fabulous, thank you, Judy. His work was greatly appreciated. Yes, he yes, did, yes. He did a lot of work. Yeah, yes. yes. Everyone. Fabulous. Does. Anyone else announcements? There's been a, a special uh, prayer request for a man by the name of David uh, Dorsey. I think his name is Dorsey. He was the previous owner of a Hallmark store in Oakhurst. And he's known by many of us, he and his wife. And uh, he is uh, pretty ill at this time. And he's asking for prayers for his healing and to uh, get back to being whole again. So our thoughts are with David and his family. Uh, and prayers for him, please. Thank you. Anyone else? I have a prayer request. Yes. My great aunt Marjorie that moved here from Alabama a little over a year ago just had um, some open heart surgery. So if you could all keep her in your thoughts. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank done. you. Thank you. Our prayer partner today is Reverend Judy DeRosa. Reverend Judy is available to you today and always, just as all your practitioners and ministers are available. Please use us. We love to pray with you. Love it. Next week's speaker, Reverend Missy, will be up and talking with us. Looking forward to hearing from you, Reverend Missy. Is she? 
Fishy. Next week. Next the speaker, speaker is I... Reverend Bob Hand. Oh, it is. When did that change? That's what it says here on the schedule. Huh. It says May 9th, hosts Reverend Missy Higginbotham, Speaker Reverend Bob Hand, Spiritual Thought Reverend Kim Haley. Okay, Reverend Bob will be out. Did you get that, Bob? <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I've got it. I I thought maybe I'd just been replaced. That's okay, too. <laughs> oh, and, and who much better by, right, Bob? <laughs> yeah. Better than you, Bob. <laughs> yeah, well, that's true. Can't, can't debate that. <laughs> we, we look forward to listening to you next week, Reverend Bob. Thank you. Let's do the prayer protection, shall we? The light of God, God surrounds, surrounds me. me. The love of God enfolds me. The power of God protects me. The presence of God watches over me. The energy of God is me. Wherever I am, God is, and all is well. Ah, what a beautiful service today. What a fabulous service of mm. speaking and praying and the music. It all just goes together so beautifully. What a great way to start my Sunday. I hope you enjoyed that too. Can we have a closing prayer by you, Reverend Sandy? Yes. Oh, what a wonderful family we have. And as we gather together in prayer, I know and accept everyone's truth. I accept the healing for all. For there is only God. And in the beauty of this knowing, I know that all is right in each and every one of our worlds. We've learned our lessons. We're moving on. We're releasing the illusion. And we're allowing the past to drop away. It's no longer needed. And we turn and we embrace the future through our now moments, making these steps that bring us more peace Bring us more love, more flowers, more whatever it is that we want in our lives. The ability to share, to gift our heart to those all around us is all for all of us. The world needs us, my friends. It needs us desperately. And we are here to answer the call. And I give such glorious thanks for that which is ours. And say with me, please. And so it is. So it is. Oh, thank, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Reverend Sandy. Thank you all who have been in service today. I hope you have a fabulous week. We'll see you next Sunday. And uh, God bless. Well, uh, one, Bye -bye. Last, one last thing. It's on the Science of Mind textbook, chapter 19, last paragraph for those that want to refer back to what Sandy had uh, spoken to us all on that one, um, that one prayer from Ernest Holmes. Thank you, Missy. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. See you next weekend. Bye-bye. <laughs> Happy day.